Hello, and thank you for joining us again. I am Lilian Agwegbe, your friendly community health educator, coming to you on Your Public Health Professional and You, a program of the Maryland Public Health Association. This is Your Public Health Professional and You, a program of the Maryland Public Health Association. As you know, and as I always say, the Maryland Public Health Association is one of the oldest public health association in the country. And we are working to advocate for health equity for all Marylanders through advocacy and community engagement. Our Public Health Professional on You program is an opportunity for us to get behind the scenes with public health professionals, get to know a little bit about who are those people working for the health equity of all Marylanders? What did they do? Um, where did they go to school? Are the students, are they working? We meet them on along the spectrum of work because as you know, public health is very diverse. The people are coming to us from public health backgrounds Some people are coming from other backgrounds and coming into public health and we get to meet them. We get to learn about them, the work that they're doing and how that is benefiting you, the average Marylander. Well, today, my guest is Ali Berry, and she said she's a stock plant or recent plant to the area of Maryland. So I'm just going to let us get to meet you, Ali. Ali, nice to have you on the program today. Thank you, it's nice to see you, Lillian. Great, so tell us a little bit about yourself, Ali. Who is Ali Berry and um, how did she get here today? That's a great question. I could answer that in so many ways, but um, yeah, right now I am the Maryland Public Health Association's climate and health coordinator. So I work with MDPHA to ensure that we're getting the health voice increased on climate and environmental equity within Maryland. Um, I am also a almost completed grad student at Johns Hopkins. Um, I will have a master's in health science in environmental health and engineering. Um, and you're right. I moved to Maryland about a year ago. I really like it here. I think it is a mover and a shaker in the world of advocacy and legislative session has been an amazing opportunity um, since I have more of a technical background in um, biology and medical anthropology. Um, so Joining here has been great. Great. So there are three angles I'm going, just as you said that there are many ways in which you could answer that question. There are three angles I'm going to follow up on your response. Okay. One, I'm going to follow up on you saying you're doing your master's work. So yes. um, what was your undergraduate degree in and how did you go from there to come to John Hopkins to do work in public health? Yeah. So um, when I entered my uh, undergraduate education. I went to the University of Washington in Seattle, so all the way across the U.S., and I thought I was going to go in for biochemistry. I quickly found out that that was not for me. <laughs> I think uh, that working in wet labs and stuff is super interesting. It's just I really wanted to have more of a connection with people and the space around me, so um, I transitioned into conservation biology I knew that I really wanted hands-on work. Um, I was drawn to the systems thinking that it required and that you have to understand how one area of the world impacts the other. Um, but even then I thought, oh, I'm not interacting with people enough. I'm interacting with a lot of salmon and mm -hmm. a lot of plants, but not this. So um, in 2019, I took a class at the University of Washington called Plagues and Peoples, and it was taught by an amazing professor. His name was Stephen Goodrow, and he's um, an infectious disease epidemiologist. And um, it went over like the greater history of infectious disease. And uniquely, the pandemic was starting three weeks into the class, um, and we had been following it since day one, when it was just a blurb in the news mm -hmm. that there was a weird little disease like uprising in Wuhan. And I think maybe the the serendipity of that event occurring while I was taking this class really, really meant a lot to me. So um, in addition to conservation biology, I decided to pursue medical anthropology and global health as another um, study. And I really, really liked it. I um, started to work in uh, community organizing 
when I was in my undergrad, I worked for uni University District Street Medicine, which was a street medicine clinic where I connected clinicians with unhoused people in Seattle's University District. Um, so how that brought me to Hopkins is that I really felt like I wanted to combine those interests of how do I combine my, my love and passion for conserving natural life with human health that is really fully integrated. So environmental health is um, just made sense to me. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. And those are one of the things that we like about public health and the fact that it's multifaceted. So Absolutely. it's just in biology, in plants, but there's the public health component. When you yeah. were talking about um plagues and peoples. Sea peoples, mm -hmm. I was remembering when I the first time I went to England after I finished my MPH and yeah. I took my daughter and we went to find the Broad Broad Street pump. Jump yep. snow and yeah. square. and my kids were like, "Oh my goodness, what's Because I'd been in England forever, but I, of course, I hadn't studied public health, so I didn't mm -hmm. know what to prompt. But then I went, and I was like, "Oh my goodness, this is it. This is what we learned about." So that's very interesting and very good. And now summer is coming around, so I wanted you to talk. You talked about the um, pandemic and how that got you into public health and we look at the environment and environmental health and we say and what's going on with marylanders you also said that you're now working in a climate coordinator at the maryland mm -hmm. public health association might mm -hmm. i add that you are the first full-time staff of the organization <laughs> and so yeah. the organization feels like we've come of age right now to be able Absolutely. to do that. But since you started this position, you've done a lot of work in collaboration. We've been able to amp up the work about environmental health in the state. Can you tell us some about the work that, you know, you've been able to do in this position and how it has helped the average Marylander? Absolutely. You know, I, I'd like to start off by saying I'm I'm biased and I think environmental health is, is public health and that I, a lot, oftentimes people want to say, oh, we're people and humans live in so indoors and then the environment and animals is in climate is entirely different thing, but it's really integrated. And um, especially with climate change, we're seeing a lot of changes into human health outcomes, be it um, heat stress, be it changes in infectious disease patterns. Um, it's huge. So I think I'm really, really grateful to join Maryland, especially the Maryland Public Health Association um, in order to work on that from a legislative front. So um, most of the work I've been able to do is building the capacity of health professionals within this state to be able to, to speak on climate and environmental health better and how it impacts their specific specialty. Mm -hmm. um, so in doing so, I've been able to develop um, what we're calling the health table under Maryland mm -hmm. Public Health Association. Um, and this is a group of, of little, I think about 15 to 20 um, professional groups um, consisting of a variety of medical professionals, social worker, social workers, pediatricians, um, and people within policy sphere. And um, we're providing educational opportunities on where climate and health intersects um, and also opportunities for advocacy. So since the table's new, we started last December um, certainly still in some capacity building efforts, but going into the 2024 legislative session, we're planning to bring forward a number of health focused priorities to mm -hmm. our partners who are more engaged in the general climate space. Um, Cause we do want to ensure that, you know, health is at the forefront of some of this decision-making. Yeah. And it's also an important voice that people trust within our mm -hmm. community. And we want to make sure that not only our medical professionals preparing for some of the changes that might occur alongside climate change, but also trying to mitigate and um, prevent some of those changes within the state. So how do we have those conversations about, you know, climate change and communicate it in such a way that people know it? And mm -hmm. how the health professionals are aware about all of these changes, because really they're the ones who are going to see the people who are yeah. affected by this. But we get the opportunity to educate our communities about it. And you said something, I know that summer is coming, it's mm -hmm. a time of heat strokes and, and things like that. Is there any work that's being done to raise awareness in general public and not just 
by you, but I'm just saying that environmentally, do you pay particular attention to information dissemination mm. by seasons? Yeah, I think seasonality is huge, especially for um, worker populations. So like you were saying in the summer, heat stress is of concern. And um, one of the things we're working on is um, a lot of our partners don't believe that Maryland has sufficient heat protection standards for these workers, mm -hmm. um, making sure that they have access to cooling mm -hmm. um, and that they're not overworking themselves just in terms of personal health and also in terms of like maintaining the job market. Um, I think it's important. So um, there is a lot of debate over how we maintain um, proper information because disinformation and misinformation in the climate sphere is really prevalent. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think there's a lot of work to build a voice from research as opposed to speculation about how some of these can occur. Um, I'm specifically less familiar with all of the different specifics of okay. seasonality, mm -hmm. but I think each specific issue has um, a framing uh, that is important to take note of. Yeah, that, That's good. So we're taking an important note of the framings of the seasons mm -hmm. of the environment. I'm going to um, ask you a little bit more about the Maryland Public Health Association. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit to know about you. Maybe you have some summer plans, like we said, summer is around the corner. Before I get into, you know, Maryland Public Health, let me get into you. Let me get yeah. into you and say, okay, so peel back Ali a little bit more, <laughs> you know. Um, people think that, oh, I'm surprised you're not wearing glasses and I'm not wearing glasses through. We are all public health. Are we some nerdy folks? Do we go um, to see, are you going to see a movie? I know, for instance, that there's a student hangout coming up soon. So mm -hmm. what is the student connection like on the MDPHA? What are the student connections like? The, the interactions for the students on MDPHA. Yeah, I think MDPHA has a really robust student section. Um, I think we have four or five different chapters across universities in Maryland now. And for me as a student, it's been really, really nice to be able to meet students within different disciplines, because I certainly know within my cohort, it's really specific to environmental issues. But I really appreciate multidisciplinary approaches and having those discussions with students who are interested in different aspects. So for example, I think our, our first and biggest chapter is the University of Maryland Pharmacy School. And they hold several general body meetings every term. Um, and it's been really great to attend some of their talks. They have great speakers that they bring in. Um, they even have merch that's specific to the school, which is really cool. Um, and I've been able to mix with other students who are maybe interested in some of the research I do, and we get to discuss, you know, how they move forward. And um, it's been a great opportunity for networking for me. I've gotten to meet some professors outside of the school that I attend um, and learn from them and find opportunities with them for, for future collaboration. Awesome. So I'm going to do this cheap thing that we do and we have to do it because this is a program of the Maryland Public Health Association. Mm -hmm. What's your pitch for the Maryland Public Health Association for public health students who are not affiliated to a student body or for professionals that you're meeting in the mm -hmm. em environmental world that are not members of the Maryland Public Health Association? What would you say um, as some of the benefits, you know, and why should a public health professional in the state of Maryland consider joining the either full body or the student body? Yeah, that's a really great question. And um, having not been a part of a public health association prior to, to joining this team, I, I had no idea what they had to offer. And I have been really pleasantly surprised, um, even from being on the inside, but also I've had a number of peers join. Um, and I think first and foremost is networking. Um, I've been able to meet so many people um, across so many disciplines, either in developing partnerships or in some of our advocacy work um, and job opportunities as well. Um, granted, I have my job now, which I really love, but um, I've been able to connect some people with different jobs and it's been really great. Um, I think for me, number one is state and federal advocacy. So obviously we're a state-based affiliate of the American Public Health Association. So a lot of our advocacy work takes place during the Maryland legislative session. And we have a great advocacy committee led by um, Tosin and Alona during this, this session. Um, 
And it provides a lot of opportunities to make your voice heard on issues that are important to you. And I think we're really open to ideas from, from different places. Obviously, I brought forward a lot of climate um, preparedness and environmental health and equity issues this year, but they had issues really spanning. Um, and I think a lot more people have been wanting to join since this last session. Um, and even students can get engaged. Um, mm -hmm. They can either write testimony or speak testimony um, or support the committee in general by, you know, developing educational materials, which is awesome. Um, and also the events we've been holding are really fantastic. I know this is still the first year that we're kind of re-entering in-person events. Um, yeah. And I think both in-person and virtual events with MDPHA have been great, um, especially our last um, National Public Health Week this past mm -hmm. April. Mm -hmm. I think we had an event every single day. Mm -hmm. um, and I've gotten, again, to meet more people. I got to learn about um, domestic violence by watching the movie Toxic, um, mm -hmm. led by our past intern, Hope. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just cool. Um, yeah, I think for students, again, I say I think the student committee is really useful. And any time that a student, I, I can say at least from the back end, any time a student mm -hmm. email rolls in, I am like on it because I think it's really important to get them engaged in this sort of um, activities. So they're always welcome to join our committees in any capacity that they have, because this is a volunteer organization at heart. Um, and, you know, again, get to know other health, health professionals and learn about communications, what it means to be in or build a nonprofit, um, mm -hmm. and community organizing. Awesome. Awesome. And since I have you here, I'm going to take advantage of you uh, yes. working in the office to tell us a little bit about what, so now somebody's listening to you, listening to us, and they're like, I want to learn more about, you know, the Maryland Public Health Association. We have mm -hmm. a website. What can people find out about us on the website? We also have this bi-weekly newsletter. Mm -hmm. that goes out, you know, who do we send it to? And, you know, what sort of information can somebody look out for in those newsletters? Yeah. So for the newsletters, it's sent to our current members um, and it holds everything from upcoming events from MDPHA or other state um, events that we think are pertinent to public health. Um, we will always have several job opportunities sent in to us that um, are either remote or throughout the state um, at varying levels from entry level to postdoctoral. Um, we'll often share upcoming or relevant news within the public health sphere. I know in the upcoming um, newsletter, we're going to have uh, an update of some of our legislative activities and some of the bills recently signed by Governor Wes Moore. Mm -hmm. um, and updates from our various committees if people want to join, if they want to participate in activities like this one. Um, I think that's that's usually what the newsletter has. And I, th I think it's really useful, again, um, especially jobs and funding activities. Uh, I People need to hear about them because there's so many. <laughs> we have to pick and choose what's what we choose on every newsletter. Right. Um, and on our website, I, in the past year, we've had the development of a beautiful new website for MDPHA. Um, you can learn about all of our um, board members and leadership there, um, some of our guiding principles, um, specific advocacy work. In the next week, we'll be putting up our 2023 legislative wrap up. Um, and I'll be adding some of the advocacy that I've been doing with our partners on the climate front. Mm -hmm. um, and you can also learn more about, you know, what it means to be a public health advocate, what it means to be a public health professional and some opportunities there. Um, we're also obviously an affiliate of APHA. So we share a lot of their um, most recent statements on federal public health issues. Um, and if there is a Maryland spin to it, uh, what's available there. And then also, if I didn't mention before, we always will have our, our events there. We have a, an event page that's rolling um, specifically for MDPHA events and then also some of the bigger opportunities we've had, like our tri-state conference in March um, or when we attend a symposium or a table somewhere. You can always find that on our website. Great, great, great. So thank you for joining me. I've been talking to Ali. Um, she is working with the Maryland Public Health 
yes, our first full-time staff were very proud of ourselves. Uh, just almost graduating from the John Hopkins School in the very near future, and um, doing some work coordinating uh, environmental work here in the state of Maryland. They have the table that has come together now, bringing professionals to really talk about it, connecting with people on the medical field. Ali, before I let you go, any last words? Um, particularly, I wanted you to talk to anybody listening to us and like, oh, public health, I don't know. I don't know what it is yeah. about. Um, should I think about it? Shouldn't I think about it? What are your thoughts for somebody out there who's like sitting on the fence right now and public yeah. health might be an option for them? Yeah, I I love that question because I've been that person so many times. Um, and, and that's really what my journey into public health was, is that I wasn't really sure how to connect to my interests, but I trusted that I, I had to keep following the the topics that I liked. And I knew that for me, like improving our com my community was important regardless of the scale. And I think public health allows you to improve, you know, the life of one person to the life of like a whole city. Um, and uh, so if you're not sure, of course, I think follow the topics that you're interested, learn about your community and what it needs. And if you feel passionate about, you know, raising up more people than one, then consider it and consider learning more about, you know, all of the disciplines that are involved in public health. It's, it's really broad. Um, and uh, ask questions. People are willing to answer. <laughs> ask questions. People are willing to answer, follow the things that interest you, learn about your community. Yeah. If you're interested in lifting more than one person, you know, you want to lift people up in groups mm -hmm. and then maybe you should give public health a, uh, some consideration and then ask questions. The public health professionals are going to be able to clarify for you whatever um, hesitancy that you have in sharing from their own field. Thank you so much, Ali. Any last words for us before we roll up? You know, like something that you think Marylanders should know either about you, the work that you're doing, or the Maryland Public mm -hmm. Health Association. Yeah, well, I, I'll give a plug for my own work is that um, you can always check out our climate advocacy page. If you as an individual are interested in making your voice heard on climate health or environmental equity, um, my email is there and other ways to contact our leadership. Um, but the only message I'll leave you with is, is wash your hands and also get outside and enjoy the sunshine. <laughs> Wash your hands, get outside, <laughs> enjoy the sunshine. I um, mean, you can reach us, Maryland Public Health Association. Get info at mdpha.org. Um, Ali is going to get that email. <laughs> and we'll follow up with you. You want to join the Maryland Public Health Association? You should. Membership is very low. You have opportunities to network and connect with people. Find out what professionals are doing in other sectors of public health and know how we are keeping Marylanders safe, advocacy and community organization. Thank you for joining us. Um, Ali, you want to say goodbye before I round up? Yeah, thank you and goodbye. It's always nice to talk to you, Lillian. Great. So thank you for joining us. Next time I will be coming to you with another episode of your public health professional and you and talking to some public health professional here in the state of Maryland focused on the health of our community members. You can email us, get info at mdpha.org. You can check us out, mdpha.org. I'll come to you again some other time. Thank you and goodbye.